Welcome everybody to yet another Polygon Review interview with me, Sebastian Hoberg. This time I have the honor of speaking to Jeff Robinson, better known as In Control. He's currently ranked very high in the Team Liquid Star League and uh, is a Zerg player to be reckoned with. Hello Jeff, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for the uh, the interview and I'm looking forward to doing this. The pleasure is mine. You are a veteran in the foreign StarCraft scene, having been around for a long time and with many victories under your belt. However, unlike most nerds in the scene, you have taken part in a gamer reality TV show and you can bench press a dozen of geeks without even breaking a sweat. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself in and outside the game of StarCraft? Sure. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I had the honor of participating on WCG's Ultimate Gamer. Um, it was kind of a cheesy, funny show, but, you know, through that I was able to meet a lot of fantastic people. I got to get my, you know, few minutes in fame and experience what it's like in Hollywood doing uh, a big time production show. And as a guy who, like, you know, like a lot of people that play this game, just, uh, you know, a, an ideal weekend day is sitting in their basement playing StarCraft for eight or nine hours. Uh, to be able to experience that and do that because of StarCraft and because of my gaming career is an absolute you know, honor and a blessing. It was a huge, huge opportunity. Uh, and as, as to the lifting of that stuff, I'm, just, I'm a very competitive person. Whatever I do, I want to do very, very well. And I think one of the reasons StarCraft has hooked me for so long is because as competitive as we all are or as competitive as I am, uh, no one's reached that ceiling yet. No one's the best, you know, especially in the non-Korean world. Um, and that's something that everyone's striving to do. So it's, it's, it offers a lot for those competitive people. Indeed it does. It was a fun show to watch, I must say. Do you think that events like Ultimate Gamer could bring pro gaming into the mainstream in a positive way, possibly? I think it definitely has that potential. I think uh, eSports is certainly a rising market, you know, as the global economy continues to waver and people are looking uh, to new markets to, to get their company names out there and to reach, um, you know, 18 to 25 year olds, uh, I think gaming is going to be that vehicle and I think WCG Ultimate Gamer uh, poked a hole in that shell and, and showed the world that um, it, it's, a, it's it, you know, it can be considered silly but it can also be considered very serious and it can reach a lot of people and it can entertain a full spectrum of people in terms of their ages or their uh, socioeconomic classes and I think you can expect to see more of that kind of stuff you know I think Europe already has a pretty strong esports world as far as the Western uh, world goes but I would like to see America follow it up you know uh, we definitely have a lot of potential and uh, we, we had some leagues that kind of fell under because of bad marketing and bad administration I would love to see more of that kind of stuff so would all of us I think and uh, let's hope that happens indeed but speaking of the market, uh, currently you're playing for the clan uh, EG, which is backed by many heavyweight sponsors. Uh, and many viewers of this video out there, they ha have the dream of being sponsored as gamers and to play professionally. You have experience of this. Uh, what can you say about the industry from that perspective and the pros and cons of going corporate, so to speak? You know, it's it's an absolute. It's just huge. It's huge. It's uh, this is something I would do if nobody paid me. And in order and and to be paid and to be traveled uh, and to have all expenses taken care of by EG and uh, Intel and Steel Series and these other uh, sponsors that fall under the Evil Genius banner, uh, it, it's tremendous. It offers it offers opportunities that otherwise I wouldn't be able to experience. Um, you know, just just this last year I went to Korea. I went to Mexico. Uh, I was in New York twice, um, and you know someday I'd like to go to Europe. And these are the kinds of things that playing for a sponsored team allows. Um, so I definitely am, am tremendously thankful um, that you know my gear is st Steel Series and it's all covered for, and my travel, uh, you know, Intel is is fortunate and nice enough to fork out the dough so that I can do that. Because as a college student or as just a young gentleman, uh, sometimes it becomes difficult to pay for all those trips and to and to justify traveling for a video game um, but when you're playing for a sponsored team that all gets taken care of and it's pretty amazing that's inspiring uh, hopefully the future will enable more and more gamers to play the game in that way and not only because they love it 
But you mentioned Korea. Earlier this autumn you went there and played in the IEF, and not to mention meeting up with the elite of foreign and Korean StarCraft. Uh, well, you got to see the holy land of StarCraft. How incredibly awesome was that, exactly? Well, I'll tell you, yeah, if, for a StarCraft fan, a trip to Korea is like a pilgrimage. It was, uh, you know, it's on TV, uh, you talk to people at the bar, you, you meet a girl, and they, they know StarCraft. It's something that's on Definitely. TV. Their brother plays it. Their their uncle used to play it. Their grandfather's associated with one of the companies that sponsors a pro team. You know, it's it's widespread, it's completely saturated, uh, and it's so it's so amazing to go from a world where you have to explain StarCraft as an advanced version of chess to people that are mildly interested in what you spend all your time doing to going to a world where you just have to say boxer or nada and people's eyes flare up because this white guy knows what who they are and uh... it was an amazing amazing trip you know i didn't do as well as i wanted uh... but i got the group of death and my odds against bisu and effort uh... even pj are pretty low um, but it, I played a lot of bet games and side games with all the guys, and I actually dominated, so I was pretty happy about that. Well done, indeed. Well, moving on to the very exciting current climate in foreign StarCraft, uh, namely speaking, the Team Liquid Star League Season 2, you and several of your clanmates are ranked high and will be able to qualify for the next round. Uh, Practically all StarCraft fans in the world are either playing or watching the tournament via the live streams. It's a most epic event indeed. Are your eyes set on the ultimate prize? And if so, what opponents will be the hardest to tear through? Well, you know, TSL is the it's the biggest stage for non-Koreans. Uh, last year's production was off the hook. It was incredible. Uh, and this year they, they they friggin' doubled the pool, so I am actually really, really excited to see what kind of production they put on. But, as, you know, if, of course my eyes are on the first place prize. Of course. Um, uh, you know, people are going to count you out, and that's uh, that's part of the reason why I was able to win a national championship, is heading into that, nobody thought to take me serious, and that, that was a nice little uh, fog cover for me, you know, and I'm looking for the same thing here. I'm a good player, but I'm not one of, you know, I'm not one of the top five, I'm not one of the perhaps not one of the top ten, people don't think I'm capable of winning a tournament like this, and that's nice for me. Uh, it, it keeps me under the radar. So the people i got to look out for um, are the usuals, you know, like Idra, Rhett, uh, and then, you know, just some of these other really strong players like Straylock, White Raw, Dreven. Um, but I'm not going to take anyone lightly. Uh, it's one of the, my strong points in competition, I think, is that I have pretty good sports psychology. Uh, and that means heading into this competition, everyone is equally dangerous to me, and I'm going to face each player uh, with a f you know full education on what they do, their tendencies. And I'm going to be well versed in the maps and the matchups. And uh, if I get defeated, uh, you know it's going to be a tough fight. That's what I want to give them. I'm sure you will, and uh, hopefully we will be able to see some of these games casted by Tasteless and Artosis and Day Nine uh, in the later rounds of the tournament. I just have to ask your professional opinion. Uh, Idra is looking very strong right now, his Korean training proving powerful, and then we have uh, Rhett as the dark horse, also in Korea, White Raw, Dimaga, Mondragon. What particular names uh, are you saying will be up there towards the end? You know, uh, some people to look out for um, barring that there's no internet connection problems, people like F91 and Sen are certainly to be to be feared. Um, a lot of people don't take them too serious because uh, Sen in particular was around the non-Korean scene uh, more a couple years ago, and a lot of the fans these days have either short-term memory uh, or no memory, as it were, and don't remember when he used to dominate. But he was one of the Mondragons, Testes, or uh, Dracos. He was one of the big guns. And I look to see him go pretty deep into this into this competition as well. And F91, uh, he doesn't lose to non-Koreans. He's been pretty dominant and consistent in his dominance. He hasn't wavered on that. So a lot of people aren't mentioning them, um, but they should be. And then some of the other names, like Mondragon, if he gets a few Protosses in his draw, uh, he won't stop. He's going to beat the Protosses. And against Terran, he's tough. So 
he's a guy that could go pretty far in the tournament, just like every year. Uh, and some of these others are like uh, Mana, Straylock, um, and, and you know just some people with lucky draws, or like White Raw. Uh, they all have really, really good matchups, and they're pretty consistent players in the other matchups. So uh, it's going to be the most intense competition we've ever seen. But those are some of the names you should look out for. It will be a thrill to watch for those of us who suck too much at the game to actually play. But uh, can I ask uh, your own style of play as a Zerg? Uh, how would you describe that? And can you compare it to any uh, dominant Korean of any sort? Are you a Jadong or a Gigi play or a July Zerg maybe? 